And are you refreshed? And now, what is it you're wanting to talk about? More things? Right here. Stand if you think it's you. Yes. Thank you for this opportunity, Abraham. I love being out here in the deep blue sea with you all. <clears throat> I was on the Mexico cruise, which happened a few weeks after the tsunami. So naturally, there were a number of questions about that. One thing I recall was that you said that the cause of it was the Earth's wanting to rebalance itself. The Earth is in a constant state of realignment, which is wonderful. Everything is about that, isn't it? I wanted to know specifically more about that, about the nature of the Earth, and... <clears throat> whether the earth is a consciousness itself, whether it's an entity, and how we can best use our beings to be in a right relationship with it. Your body is made up of trillions of cells, and you are the consensus of all of that. And yet, there is a you that we refer to, or that you all refer to, that is more than just the sum total of the cells. Because the consciousness that is you is beyond that of the collection of the individual cells. You could say that your personality, or your ego, or the inner being of you is focused in a way that causes you to be a being that is beyond just the sum total of those cells. Earth is same in that it is made up of all kinds of pieces of whatever it is you're wanting to call the makeup of the physical world. But there is not a focused energy you in the earth as there is in the human. In other words, there's not a brain that makes you the personality that you are of the earth. And yet, it, it would be incorrect to call the earth not a being because it is a living, breathing being in the sense that everything is. But there is that distinction. Is that enough for you? No. <laughs> I appreciate that very much, but I'd like to go on from there. Um, one of the things that concerns I mean, I love the earth very much. I think about it a lot. And I'd like to know the relationship between our actions, especially our use of the law of attraction on the earth. So that, <clears throat> for instance, I could make a choice to... Um, one of the things I'd like to do is photography and nature photography. I can take pictures of flowers or dolphins if I get the chance. Another thing that I could do if I chose was say to, to buy a sports car and, and drive it around and enjoy nature that way. But from one point of view, the, the impact on the earth of those two choices is very different. In the case of the sports car, it's, um, it's consuming materials that are drawn from the earth. It's also using non-renewable resources to move around. That's an inaccurate word, that non-renewable word. Well, I'm wondering about that, and I'd like, like more explanation. Well, we'll give you the big picture and then we'll answer individual questions if you have more. But the most significant thing that we would like to say to you is that your earth in its vastness, and by that we're including more than just 
what it is now. We're talking about it in its entirety. We're talking about the energy of it. We're talking about the energy of the participants on it that have summoned it. In other words, the, the vastness of the whole Earth scenario is such a large and powerful energy of well-being that it really, and this is hard for some humans to hear, but it is not possible for the small in relationship population of disconnected humans to offer a significant enough impact in view of all of the extraordinarily extraordinary abundance of well-being to have any not only lasting but any uh, perceivable negative effect we really want you to understand that the vastness of your earth and the energy of the earth and the earth in its placement with other planets and the non-physical projection toward the earth in other words it's just a lot of worry that is the effect that the worry that you have about the earth has only affects your personal beingness you see it would be like and analogies are never perfect but it would be like a tiny little mite crawling across your hand and worrying deeply about the well-being of your body and you would say but I can't even see you if I do not have a magnifying glass so certainly you cannot have much impact upon me so a concern for instance about extinction of species well do you miss the dinosaurs <laughs> I don't know I haven't met them um, well trust us but the, you don't miss them they they were that which came for, forth prior to you in preparation for you but their evolution their coming and going is not a disadvantage to you and all of that is orchestrated from broader perspective the population the physical population is something that is managed from non-physical perspective and it is in very good hands you really do not need to worry about it so even though the scientific consensus these days is that we're losing 100 species per day that is not a concern the scientific consensus is very narrow and very um, backwards and very missing the point and the purpose of my question really is to understand the larger perspective well the the advantage that you have as you listen to the battle of the scientists is there anything that they all agree on never and so pick the one that makes you feel the best and listen to that one I'm not sure I need to pick any my, my question is more what is the so, sources perspective sources perspective of your planet is that it is a thriving entity with a longevity beyond your ability to describe it is an extension of energy a manifestation as a result of energy and which, which is what causes the longevity to be as we state it to be it is an environment which we describe as the platform for the leading edge of thought and in being that has been so dramatically tended to by so much energy that has preceded it that it is incomprehensible for us even with our broad view to see the end of it and surprising to us that any human with your narrow view would be predicting such a thing so I can be soothed about any choices I may make personally or in fact anybody may make personally about well one thing about your earth in its 
seeking of continual balance. There is a recycling program that is going on that is dramatic and effective. In other words, you really do not need to worry about it. It's interesting as we watch human who is just beginning to discover the resources of your planet. You have not even begun to discover them, really. It's interesting to see some of you proclaim shortage when you are so early in your discovery of the resources that you have here. And also, it's interesting that most humans still are not at the place where they understand that their exposure to the environment is causing the asking for which then the environment will then yield in other words this is all part of what we're talking about we look at you as an economical society and we notice that you have not even begun to tap the economic resources of your environment we ask you to use your objective mind to analyze what has taken place in the short time that you even have access to your historical records as you acknowledge that there are not pipelines from other planets coming in and refueling your uh, reservoirs. There are not spaceships coming in and bringing you other elements you are in the process of constant discovery of the elements that are here but even more important in your exposure to what is here as you mix it up with each other you're coming to new conclusions of what you desire that source is then helping to bring about now here is something that we will give you it will sort of satisfy your thirst for wanting to worry a little bit and while we are not wanting to encourage your worry at all, we will give you this understanding of what's going on in your energy that, that sort of explains why you, might, why you might worry. You've been hearing us talking. We do it all the time. It's the most often offered scenario that we offer as we talk about how you are combing through the contrast and out of it you are giving birth to new desires. And everything is that way it always will be that way so as your contrast becomes more acute you ask with greater definition and poignancy and when you do that source answers with stronger current so your planet becomes not less resourceful but more resourceful as more of you are asking with more specifics and you notice that even as you look at your own demands of your own economics in your generation versus the one before and the one before and the one before that you're simply asking for more and receiving more so the logical mind would say well since we're asking for so much more now we must be using it up but that is because the person who is analyzing that is looking at this as a finite opportunity where there are limited resources instead of understanding that this is a living breathing mechanism the whole game of physical life where the resources are not finite but infinite they continue to come forth you see you are in your now present time space reality launching rockets of desires that will be benefited by future generations in other words future generations will reap the benefit of much that your now time space reality is asking for and part of the work that we do is to try to help you get up to speed with what you're asking for so that you get to live the manifestation of what the contrast has caused you to want and so that gap is closing there is a sort of magnifying glass that's being laid over everything that you are living so that the cra crevasse between those who are letting their well-being in and those who are not well letting their well-being is becoming more exaggerated but we want you to understand that the well-being the overall well-being of your planet is increasing exponentially with the exposure to experience that you are all having so just as one individual could live contrast and launch a rocket of desire that is so far from where he is and he could continue to beat the drum of what is and therefore deprive himself of any quick realization of what he's asked for so on a global basis that can be happening and we think that that sum of what you are intuitively feeling is that your society in its contrast is asking for way more than its 
conscious readiness to allow and it's that imbalance that we think is at the heart of your question more than a real belief that there is shortage and that soon or any time that the resources of the planet are going to peter out